So welcome everybody here <laughs> in the afternoon session. And we will um, have uh, three presentations today. Uh, the first one is given by Lauren uh, from the University of Granada. And uh, uh, the topic is humanitarian reports on relief, but as a domain specific corpus. So the floor is yours. OK. So first of all, what is Relief Web? Relief Web is a service provided by the United Nations service uh, the, that organizes uh, humanitarian affairs. And it is about 30 years old. It was created in the 1990s. It has these days about 11 million users. And it contains roughly 1 million reports, humanitarian reports from thousands of different humanitarian organizations throughout the world. And so it is billed as the principal information system for prevention, preparedness, and rapid response for the humanitarian community. This is the resource that you can go to if you want to know what's happening in the world, what crises people are trying to respond to, and what issues they're trying to deal with. Now, as such a large database, Relief Web is also quite useful for linguists who are interested in studying humanitarian discourse. Relief Web has their own internal suite of tracking tools that they use to try to understand what's happening in the world of the humanitarian of, of humanitarian action. And they also provide full API access to all that data. Since it's been around for several decades, Relief Web has been used by a variety of authors for different purposes. Uh, two simple examples that we can think of for linguists would be to discursively track famine, to see when famines might occur over time and to extract knowledge via semantic embedding. And I would say that the similarity that all of these resources have, of course, is that they want to improve humanitarian response by leveraging that linguistic data. Because we know we can have it, we can always make better use of it and improve humanitarian communication, for example. And of course, if we can address that, we can also look at trying to improve the transfer of knowledge within the domain because humanitarian concepts, ideas that different groups talk about aren't universally defined. And of course, there are issues that uh, can cause poor communication between these actors that could might mm, slow down their response in effective ways. So the objectives for this study were to develop a corpus based on all of that API data to analyze that database's composition, gauge its suitability and limits, and facilitate that type of research in uh, humanitarian knowledge extraction. And for us, the immediate applications were to try to improve the humanitarian encyclopedia, which uh, different members of our team have presented on here. Um, it is a website that has roughly 129 concepts that uh, they try to study and publish linguistic reports on that include expert in input about these concepts. And its main goal is really to foster expert linguist and community dialogue. Of course, one of our main issues is, try to, is trying to study the multidimensionality of humanitarian concepts, how different actors conceive of different concepts differently, different terms, how they use them, um, and how that influences humanitarian effectiveness. So to undertake this study, we used a, a variety of different methodologies. First of all, it relied on an effect size keyness analysis, which is set up to compare how different terms appear in two corpora. In this case, we used the humanitarian encyclopedia's internal corpus which is much smaller, but they're vetted manually, and the relief, web con the relief web corpus that we developed here. We then took that information and did a knowledge-rich context analysis. And uh, generally speaking, we can say that this pipeline that we use for the humanitarian encyclopedia is influenced quite a lot by frame-based terminology. And then on the tools side, uh, there's always quite a lot of software that we use to make these sorts of resources, but um, the queries that were made to extract the data were through corpus query language, and uh, those were utilized through a SketchUp API wrapper that we've also developed. 
So the main concern here was um, whether or not relief ribs reports are really a good source of data for studying humanitarian concepts. You might think that, well, if there's a million of them, obviously they're important, but we also want to understand what is really the quality of those reports. Generally speaking, relief web, uh, relief web's HTML data, which is what you'd see on the website, uh, is made up of short documents and even documents that are summaries that don't include full data. So that might influence the quality of any results that we would be getting if we use it compared to a manually created corpus that we know is full of complete large documents. So the procedure here was to uh, take those two corpora uh, to compare the concept keyness, to track different frequencies on an annual basis, and also to extract the knowledge-rich contexts that were focused on the basically hypernymic and definitional contexts, which I'll talk about later. But getting back to the corpus itself, we created the corpus out of roughly 700,000 reports, which is almost two thirds of Relief Web. This included just the HTML content. Relief Web has a lot of PDFs that are also included as attachments, but they can't be accessed directly. And as we know, uh, processing PDFs is a much more complicated task, so that was set aside for now. The data that we put together was um, written with Python and will be available as a package on GitHub. But I'll say right away that um, Relief Web being a million reports with lots of PDFs, it could take quite a lot of time to do this yourself, so you'd have to be invested into dedicating half a terabyte of data and weeks of using the API, just to let you know. Now the tool that we used to create the corpus itself was the Stanza NLP pipeline, which is a, a package on Python that you can install via pip. And that is based on the universal dependencies EWT tree bank. And we compiled the corpus with no sketch engine Docker, which is a dockerized version of no sketch engine, uh, which is also available on GitHub through a third party. When we made the corpus, uh, we ended up with, once again, close to 700,000 documents, uh, which averaged mm, less than 600 words per document on average. Relief Web has quite a lot of uh, API fields, and we took the ones that were most reasonable for corpus uh, queries and tried to preserve the structure of the data so that um, whatever you look up in the corpus is exactly what you would get on Relief Web. So for example, we would have uh, the report ID, its URL, its title, um, the type of organization that it came from, which go, the name of the organization, the country that could be affected um, if it's a natural disaster, for example, and several others like the humanitarian theme, which they classify it under. Overall, our results showed that Relief Web uh, at least this corpus of Relief Web treated roughly 250 w countries, um, which mostly focused on African and Eastern Mediterranean World Health Organization regions, um, and included just under 3,000 different organizations with a clear focus on the United Nations. And as you'd expect, the main topics were natural disasters like flood and epidemic. It has central themes like human, humanitarian rights, health, food, and nutrition. And most of those documents tend to be, uh, the vast majority are news, press releases, and situation reports. So we took that data, and we took the corpus and did a keenness analysis using the 129 concepts that are already in the encyclopedia, which would give us a good sense of uh, whether or not the relief web corpus really includes the, the meat that we're looking for uh, to get uh, more interesting, more useful information about uh, those concepts. And overall, we found that the keyness for the, these concepts in Relief Web are much lower. So for example, uh, there's 129 concepts and only 10 of them had a keyness over one, 
and one would mean that the two corpus, the two corpora have the same relative density of that concept. Over one would mean that it's more, uh, relatively speaking, more dense in the relief web corpus, and under one means that we're not getting enough of that concept, more or less. So, uh, and on the other hand, the low keyness scores, which are under one, show that there's much more content in the uh, in the humanitarian encyclopedia corpus. So, knowing that, we also wanted to look at the diatron diachronic trends for some concepts to see mm, if we can get a bit of a better idea of how this data. Um, how this data is usable or not usable for our purposes. We selected these concepts based on the different types of trends they had, if they were upward trends over time or downward or flat, basically. Those included humanitarian reform, sustainability, resilience, gender-based violence, settlement, and sovereignty. Now, there's always some exceptions here. The corpora aren't perfectly aligned, so while they both cover roughly the same two decades, uh, they Relief Web has more, and there's some tagging issues, and there's also a question about how much these corpora overlap, because they're both domain-specific corpora that focus on publicly available uh, PS PDFs uh, and HTML documents online. So we'd expect there to be some overlap, but we're not quite sure. That would take uh, a separate analysis. So for example, for sustainability, Here's how uh, the relative frequencies in that text type uh, compare between the two corpora. You can see that uh, the humanitarian encyclopedia, humanitarian encyclopedia corpus has much higher frequencies, um, and the relief web corpus is, is much lower. This is the case for most of the concepts, where you can clearly see that uh, relief web, as uh, indicated earlier, does not have the same level of frequencies. One of the few concepts that had declining usage, and which is an interesting case, is humanitarian reform. Uh, talking with an expert, my understanding is that humanitarian reform was introduced uh, in the first decade of the 2000s, and you can see that it was popular, people were using it, and it almost disappears. It looks like there might be more frequencies in 2019, but that's actually a tagging issue where the uh, Humanitarian Encyclopedia Corpus doesn't have full data for 2019. So it looks much bigger than it actually is. Here's one for settlement. This is one of the cases where we have a high keyness. You expect the uh, Relief Web Corpus to actually have much higher frequencies than the Humanitarian Encyclopedia. But if you break it down by year, you can see that actually on a yearly basis, these uh, two corpora have almost the same frequencies. And Really, if you discount 2000, 2001, 2002, all of these years that we don't have data for the Humanitarian Encyclopedia Corpus, really uh, the keyness is much lower than you'd expect. Here's another case with sovereignty. Uh, and then two other concepts that we looked at with clear upward trends were gender-based violence, which you can see has grown steadily between both of the corpora in the last two decades and resilience, which follows similar patterns. So uh, taking those six concepts that we now understand a little bit better, we did a knowledge-rich context analysis. So if you're not familiar with that, we are extracting concordances through SQL carries and trying to pull out sentences where we see the concept with a specific relationship. So resilience is also a contested term. In the literature, we have resilience being the concept, the hyponym, and term being the hypernym. So for those sample concepts, we compare the density, and when we look at those hypernyms and the definitions. Generally speaking, even though we saw that the, uh, the frequencies at the, at the keyness level were much lower for uh, the relief web corpus, when it comes to actual good context, good, uh, good concordances, they're about the same. They were both hovering around 2%. In this case, for example, gender-based violence and sovereignty were the two that had the highest density, perhaps because they're, trying, they're being defined more often, they might be more fuzzy, people want to try to 
um, characterize them in more detail. We also looked at the Saharid hypernyms uh, of these concepts. We got several hundred hypernyms, two, 260 con contexts, 100 hypernyms, more or less. And those were shared uh, about one out of four times between the two corpora. So for example, with gender-based violence, you can see shared hypernyms like abuse, challenge, problem, concern. These appear in both corpus, both corpora, but in the humanitarian encyclopedia one, we might have burden, and in relief web, we have barrier. And we could get into a detailed analysis about how we want to classify those. Are they really similar? Are they different? But at least it gives, gives us an idea of what kind of content we're getting. In terms of definitions that were much fewer, uh, resilience and gender-based violence and sovereignty, uh, they were a little bit more contextualized in Relief Web for resilience, but most of the time this was similar, and they tracked quite well between the two corpora. So for example, here's a definition of sovereignty, and because sovereignty is a pretty stable concept, we all more or less know what it is, the definitions are actually for food sovereignty. So here, food sovereignty in the HE corpus is, is considered part of a right of the people, and in Relief Web is a right of the state. So there's certainly juicy information there for us to look at. So overall, we saw that the low concept frequencies in Relief Web HTML texts it was a concern, but actually when you look at the knowledge rich context analysis, we get good data, partially because it's enormous, because it's a million documents probably. And generally speaking, we saw that Relief Web has more interest in events that affect populations like epidemic and famine, whereas it has less of a focus on processes like advocacy and sustainability, other things humanitarians might talk about. So looking at this, um, we're hoping to take the Relief Web Corpus, uh, conduct more fuller analyses, study variation in more detail. This was obviously more or less an example of one of the ways you could use this corpus and also expand them. We are working on including the PDF data, which includes, which requires a whole different pipeline, but will provide us a really complete picture of uh, the humanitarian discourse to some extent. Um, and also because Relief Web has documents in multiple languages. We're hoping to create a, a family of corpora, especially in English, French, and Spanish. And there are other languages, but they probably don't have enough, enough frequencies to really be of much use. Um, finally, of course, having this data is great, but we also want to make it available to people, uh, make it available to experts and other linguists. So we've been developing different visualization techniques one of them that we're trying to beta test right now is the Humanitarian Encyclopedia Concepts Tracker. Uh, if you're interested in humanitarian discourse, uh, go ahead and check out the Humanitarian Encyclopedia's website. Uh, and on the analysis page, there's the concept tracker. And if you'd like to be a beta tester, let us know. We're always looking for more help. And as, our, uh, as my colleague Santi was saying in his uh, presentation, uh, we are happy to make more uh, friends in the world of trying to study humanitarian concepts. So please let us know. But that'll be it. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, sorry, maybe I missed it, but where, where could I find this uh, uh, corpus? So is it freely available now? So you oh. could use the GitHub uh, repository okay, that yeah. I've I've put together to recreate that corpus. Like oh, I said really? earlier, okay. that could take a few weeks. We're, uh, we've talked to Relief Web about this and they have, uh, they have internally and externally people who are interested in this content. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, their search functionalities on their website are just like Google more or less, mm -hmm. and they, they're not full text either. So um, they seem to be interested in uh, being able to use a corpus like this, obviously Sketch Engine provides way better yeah. um, refinements. So we're hoping to work with them to be able to provide perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, a permanent home for these uh, type of corpora. Yeah, because it would, it, would, it would be very useful for other linguistic research, like yeah. social linguistics and other. Yeah, so obviously um, that's probably the best bet mm -hmm. unless you really want to get your hands on the data right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So do you have any questions, uh, comments? No, um, it would be very depressing uh, to read through this 
uh, relief that. So um, I don't know how how did you choose <laughs> <laughs> this topic, or maybe it's just too, too personal. So uh, at the University of Granada, we have been uh, working with the humanitarian encyclopedia for several years now. Mm -hmm. They've hired us as a linguist team mm -hmm. to help provide more perspective mm -hmm. um, as they develop their encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. So really, they're interested in getting. Uh, more communication between linguists and experts and develop those resources. So um, humanitarian, the humanitarian domain isn't necessarily our expertise, but we're hoping that uh, we can help them out with their goals and obviously develop more methods that can be applied to any type of domain. And then you connect to the uh, Swiss uh, humanitarian encyclopedia project, right? So it's a right. uh, this right. second step. Right, so we'll... Mm -hmm. uh, help develop analyses that can inform what are the entries mm -hmm. for each of the concepts on the encyclopedia. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah.